Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a blue-white Okatra's Monument deck and at the same time it's a bit of an Okatra tribal deck. Okatra's Monument, a 3-mana legendary artifact and uncommon, saying white creature spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast and whenever we cast a creature spell we get to make a 1-1 white warrior creature token with vigilance. So the monument makes our creatures cheaper and also generates an entire army Army of warrior tokens and then taking a look at the rest of the deck which of course consists mainly of creatures to synergize with the monument and one mana we've got the full playset of selfless savior a one mana one one that we can sacrifice to give another creature indestructible until end of turn so it can protect one of our key creatures then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Containment Priest, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with Flash saying if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So there's a lot of cards that this can counter, for instance Collected Company puts creatures in play without casting them, so the Priest will exile them. It also stops the Moxus from cheating any goblins in play, and the Priest is also great against any reanimator strategy. Then we also have two copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, a 2 mana 2-1 two legendary human soldier with first strike, saying non-creature spells cost one generic mana more to cast. Now if this is symmetrical, we also have to pay one more mana for our non-creature spells, but besides Monument and our copies of Dusk to Dawn, we don't have any non-creature spells in the deck, so while playing a turn 2 Thalia doesn't let us play a turn 3 Monument, it's still such a powerful card against a lot of decks in a metagame that I don't mind playing two copies. And then we also have the full playset of Meddling Mage, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two human wizard that as it enters the battlefield we have to choose a non-land card name and spells with the chosen name cannot be cast. Now of course you do need to have a bit of knowledge of the metagame so you can quickly identify which deck your opponent is playing so you can name something useful with Meddling Mage but it is a great card to shut down some of the more linear combo decks in the format. And then we also have two copies of Nyambi, esteemed speaker, a 2 mana 2 1 a legendary human cleric with flash. And when Nyambi enters the battlefield, we can return another target creature we control to its owner's hand. And if we do, we gain life equal to that creature's converted mana cost. So this can also potentially save one of our key creatures or potentially re enable another enter the battlefield effect. And then for three mana, we can tap Nyambi and discard a legendary card in order to draw two cards. So the Oketra's Monument is indeed legendary, so we can only have one in play at the same time. So sometimes we can use Nyambi to discard additional copies and still get a bit of value. And then at 3 mana, besides our 4 copies of Okatra's Monument, we also have the full playset of Deputy of Detention. This is the main removal spell in the deck. A 3 mana 1-3 of a Dalkin Wizard that when it enters the battlefield, exiles target a non-land permanent an opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name as the one we exiled with the Deputy and that will stay exiled until the Deputy leaves the battlefield. So this is a great answer to whole bunch of tokens as those will stay exiled forever but of course can also deal with a lot of the problematic permanents we might encounter along the way. And then we also have the full playset of Militia Bugler, a 3 mana 2-3 human soldier with vigilance. And when a bugler enters a battlefield, we can look at the top of four cards of our library, reveal a creature card with power two or less from among them and put it into our hand. And the rest goes on the bottom. So this is one of our main card draw engines in the deck. And most of the creatures, besides the two Oketras, will have power two or less. So the bugler has a pretty good hit rate and can potentially help us find these key creatures to disrupt the opponent's game plan in certain matchups. And next up we've got another card draw creature with Elite Guard Mage, a 4 mana 2-3 flyer that when it enters the battlefield lets us gain 3 life and draw a card. And we can also find it with the Militia Bugler since it still has power 2 or less. And then we also have two copies of Oketra the True from Amonkhet Remastered, a 4 mana 3-6 legendary god with double strike and indestructible, but Oketra can't attack or block unless we control at least three other creatures. So of course this pairs very well with the Oketra's Monument, which will generate a bunch of tokens for us to turn on Oketra. And for 4 mana, Oketra can also generate a 1-1 a warrior creature token with Vigilance, so that's another way to potentially self-enable Oketra. And then at 5 mana we've got the other Oketra from War of the Spark, a 3-6 legendary zombie god with double strike. And whenever we cast a creature spell, we get to make a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. And when Oketra dies, we can put it in our library third from the top. 
And then last but not least, we've got two copies of Dusk to Dawn, a 4-mana sorcery that destroys all creatures with power 3 or greater, and except for God Eternal Oketra and the 4-4 zombies she generates, the entire deck will survive the Dusk half of Dusk to Dawn. And then Dawn for 5 mana is a sorcery with Aftermath, so we can play this out of the graveyard if we've cast Dusk first. We get to return all creature cards with power 2 or less from our graveyard to our hand, so this can be a nice source of card advantage in the more grindy matchups. And then the mana base, we've got 4 copies of Hallowed Fountain, 4 copies of Glacial Fortress, and then 5 islands, giving us a total of 13 blue sources, and then 7 planes alongside 2 copies of Shafet Dunes, a desert we can sacrifice to give all our creatures plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and then 2 copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with... A functional hand, so we don't really have any early interaction besides a deputy. No meddling mages or thalias to potentially slow down a combo deck, but uh, still gotta keep. So turn one, just play the planes. Archfiend's Vessel, so it could be some sort of reanimator deck. Thoughtseize might take away deputy or monument. Takes the deputy. And village rights. They probably wanted to attack for one first. But next turn we could see a claim to fame reanimate a vessel. Not much I can do in the meantime. Probably want to hold Nyambi to pick up the bugler again. It's going to be Young Pyromancer. Into another one mana spell. Typically see Lurus as companion, so kind of surprised not to see it here. And yeah, they do have claim to make a 5-5 on turn 3. So that's why they took the deputy. Maybe I'm supposed to just play Bugler here in the hopes of finding another deputy. If I play Monuments, I can still next turn go Bugler plus deputy if I find it, although I'll be taking a little bit of extra damage on the ground. But it's probably fine here. Meddling Mage. Could name Shock. Could name... a number of cards. Probably start by playing Bugler anyway. Find a Guard Mage. Yeah, probably just name Shock. Although they don't seem to have it in hand. But long term, that's probably the card that I'm most worried about since that could potentially kill one of my key creatures. And then Yambi can pick up the Bugler again to maybe go digging for another Deputy. Dusk to Dawn would also be good. It's gonna be a Pillar of Flame instead. Alright, our opponent got us. Most decks usually have four shocks, but uh, in this case they also had Pillar. Steals my Bugler, might get sacrificed to a Village Rites here. So, do I take 7 or do I chum block my own bugler? If I take 7 then I'm dead to another demon attack, so... Probably should avoid that. Although I guess we're also gaining a bit of life. But that's fine, we can make more tokens anyway. Alright, we drew another bugler, that also works. This is more likely to find me a deputy than playing guard mage. And I guess we'll take another guard mage. Sadly, Dusk to Dawn goes to the bottom. And then might as well attack. They also have uh, this Fame that can potentially pump a creature. So gotta keep that in mind. And Redheart Arcanist can also replay a one drop from the graveyard. 
And they're gonna give it haste so they can flash back a card right away. Archfiend's Vessel. And let's see what happens here. Goes for the Claim the Firstborn to get rid of a blocker. So... Definitely want to kill the Arcanists. And then I guess I'll take five. Our opponent is out of cards and there's Deputy with Detention, so I think we're actually going to turn this around. So let's play the Deputy. Get rid of the Demon. And then I could shock myself to keep up Nyambi, which can gain me more life, or I can just play another Guard Mage. I guess we'll just play another Guard Mage. Meddling Mage is nice. Bugler and Guard Mage can attack. I guess the token can as well. So what's the card I'm most worried about at this point? Maybe a Call of the Death Dweller or another Claim to Fame? Nyambi can pick up the Militia Bugler and the air opponent concedes. So this was definitely a close game. Luckily we were able to find another deputy in time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Allures of the Dream Den deck. Could be Core Spirit Dancer deck, could be the Black Rat Paramancer deck. This sounds reasonable. I mean, we're on the play, so if we figure out our opponent is on the Spirit Dancer deck, we can play turn to Meddling Mage, naming Spirit Dancer. And that's definitely gonna help. And yeah, let's go for it. And our opponent concedes. Easy peasy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing an unknown opponent. And we've got a pretty decent draw here. Turn one savior to protect meddling mage, monuments to give our future creatures a nice discount, and then guard mage as a way to potentially refuel. Uh, let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain, and Skirk Prospector. All right, the Goblins matchup is pretty rough for our deck, although Meddling Mage certainly helps. So Meddling Mage either names Muxus or Krenko. Problem is, if we name Krenko, then they can always play Muxus and hit a Krenko, or maybe find a Snoop, which can then reveal a Krenko on top of their deck. So naming Krenko doesn't necessarily shut down Krenko. But now I'm definitely naming Muxus since they could potentially play next turn already. And then we've got the Selfless Savior to protect from a potential Jump Palm Incinerator. And Monument plus Guard Mage is a good way to potentially shut down their aggro plan of just curving out with a Chieftain. Although Krenko is still going to be difficult to beat. It's gonna be a war chief for now. No attacks. Let's play monuments. Yeah, it looks like they might be just uh, playing a Krenko next turn. In which case, we need to find a deputy of detention as soon as possible. Dusk to Dawn could also work. They did have a jump home, so. Gonna save the meddling mage. And it's going to be a Goblin Chieftain. Also, they don't have any great attacks this turn, because we have an indestructible Meddling Mage. Alright, there's Dusk, so that can deal with the War Chief, but definitely going to just hold it in case they play Krenko. And Bugler's not bad, so... 
got some ways to draw more cards. I've got an answer to Krenko. This is shutting down Moxus. But as soon as they find another gem palm, they can deal with the meddling mage and then our house of cards comes crumbling down. Matron can find another gem palm. It's going to be Krenko instead, which they can play here. Although they'll have to sacrifice two goblins. And then Dusk can deal with Krenko. Goes for a second war chief instead. If they still play Krenko here, they're definitely playing into the Dusk. And I don't mind double blocking. Now, because I have a Prospector in play, I wouldn't be able to Dusk to kill both War Chiefs here anyway, because they can always sacrifice a Chieftain in response. So, I think we play Bugler, since that gives me the best chance of finding another Meddling Mage or Containment Priest here. Meddling Mage can shut down Krenko. So we're kind of doing it. This is the board state we want to get to. One meddling mage shutting down Muxus, the other one shutting down Krenko, and then a monument to provide enough blockers. But uh, as soon as they find another gem palm, we could be in trouble. More guard mages, that's a good thing. And wow, opponent just concedes. You definitely don't expect to win the Goblin matchup with this deck, but this is how it looks like when you do. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Facing Gigantha, the Wellspring as companion, typically indicates a red burn deck. This hand's reasonable against a red deck, since Thalia makes all their burn spells more expensive. And we do see Forgotten Cave. Turn to Electrostatic Fields. Let's get this Thalia out there. And we even have the Selfless Savior to protect Thalia from the first burn spell. Nyambi can also gain a bit of life back. Deputy can get rid of Electrostatic Field. Alright, maybe a little bit premature here, but I'll take it on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty slow, but it is powerful, so I'll try it. Turn 1 Stitcher Suppliers, so probably got for his gift deck. Or maybe some sort of Grixis Dredge deck. It's a creeping chill. Second monument, not super useful here. It's a Croxa and a Narcomoeba for free. And discard one of the monuments. At least island means they won't be able to escape Croxa next turn. And I guess we'll play the monuments. Next turn we can go Deputy plus Bugler. Or maybe just play Okatra first to start generating 4-4s. Four While Zav can turn into a Croxa. So that's definitely a creature we wouldn't mind getting rid of. Although we definitely have some options. So let's just play it safe and go Bugler plus Deputy. And then maybe next turn we can play Oketra. If 
find Thalia and Meddling Mage. Those are both pretty good. Opponent is playing quite a few non-creature spells. Not sure what Meddling Mage is supposed to name. I think I'm just going to go with Thalia. And then we'll still Deputy for now. Get rid of Lazaf. And if we draw land, we can maybe go Ketra plus Thalia next turn. It's going to be a hard cast Narcomiba. The Guard Mage will be able to block the Flyers here, so I'm not too concerned. And another Bugler. So we've got options. I don't hate the idea of getting Okatra out there, so we can start making 4-4s. Four At 11 life, it's probably fine. And then I think I'll wait one turn before I start attacking. Because if the supplier smells something scary, like a bunch more creeping chills, that could be bad for me. But next turn, we'll be able to gain a bit of life back and we'll be a lot more stable. Archfiend's Vessel can also turn into a 5-5. Five five. Alright, now I can probably afford to block the suppliers. So, yeah, let's do that. And hope they don't mill over Creeping Chill. But even if they do, we should still be okay. Alright, does hit a Creeping Chill, which does get back double Silver Smote Ghoul here, if I'm not mistaken. But we've got a ton of 1-1s one to block those. Start getting some life. And then we can also play Meddling Mage if we want to. Doesn't seem super necessary, to be honest. Let's just play another Bugler. And Deputy Detention seems pretty good. And I guess we can start attacking. Still can't escape Croxa. Too many blue sources. So we're taking one. And we even have the second Oketra coming up. They can sacrifice a Rivulet to mill themselves. Maybe hope to hit another Creeping Chill. No Creeping Chills. And, uh, yeah. Let's try to close out the game. Alright, that'll do it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. This is going to be a mulligan, unfortunately. This is better. And we'll bottom Dusk, which is the most conditional card. Not sure what the Meddling Mage is naming at this point. Steam Vents untapped for Witching Well. So I'm guessing this is a Song of Creation combo deck, so I know what Meddling Mage is naming. Could also name Thassa's Oracle, but Song of Creation is probably the scariest card. And 
Yeah, there we see the stomping grounds. Our opponent is playing the teamer colors. Hit for two, play Bugler. Find a Thalia, which is also amazing. So we're definitely shutting down the Song of Creation deck if that's what the opponent is indeed playing. Chamber Sentry, all right. They're gonna try and kill my Meddling Mage, but we can deputy it. And our opponent concedes, nice. So being able to punish combo decks is definitely one of the strengths of this deck with Meddling Mage and Thalia. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Jigantha, probably a burn deck. This hand's pretty bad. All right, we can keep this. And what do I put on the bottom? Maybe the Selfless Savior. Like, I definitely want to keep Monument and then Okatra to try and close out the game quickly. Deputy can maybe get rid of some creatures or, like, an Experimental Frenzy. Savior's nice too, because it can save a key creature from a burn spell, but... All right, put in some Merfolk instead. Glad I held on to the Deputy. Yeah, Selfless Savior's probably not going to shine against Merfolk. But they've got a nice aggressive start. Merfolk now also picked up Collected Company as an extra tool. Next turn we can get rid of both Kumena speakers potentially. And Kumena, Tyrant of Raska shows up. I mean, could also get rid of Kumena here, but I think the two Kumena speakers are a bigger priority. Although I guess long term I can make some chum blockers with monuments, but Kumena can become unblockable. I'm at 13 already. It's probably going to be pretty tough either way. Can't really afford to play monuments. Yeah, let's get rid of both Kumena speakers. And with fewer creatures in play, Kumena is also a little bit less scary. Silvergill's a good one. Reveals Biomancer, which they can also play. So we'll see if our opponent wants to start drawing cards or if they want to prioritize attacking with Kumena. Gets in for one and then they can draw a card end of turn. Yeah, I really need another deputy here. And as soon as they play another Merfolk, they can put a plus one counter on the entire team. And if they ever find a Lord like the Merrigiri or Merfolk Mistbinder, we're probably just dead. It's gonna adapt to Biomancer. Discarding a land, so maybe they're flooding a bit. I guess a Merfolk deck is always flooding. Just looking at Kumena. Standing in the middle of a flood. And there's a Mistbinder, so they can hit for two. But now we've got multiple creatures we need to deal with. So it's not looking good. Bugler. So yeah, let's Bugler, see if we can find another deputy. Meddling Mage instead. Probably name Merrigiri, which is still a 4-off in their deck. Could also name Company. But I'll name Reach. But I'm still on a two turn clock since they can make Kumena unblockable by tapping a creature. And two more from the Herald, so. This is just a 
temporary roadblock. Opponent passes, I guess they're just gonna put a plus one counter on the entire team instead. So I could go Catra plus Bugler. Is that better than just playing the Bugler now? Maybe. I mean, I do need to start applying a bit of pressure myself. And even if I find a deputy here, it's probably not enough. My opponent, if they put a counter on the entire team, can hit me for seven unblockables. I wouldn't quite be dead next turn, so I don't know. I guess we'll play Okatra first. Maybe a Dusk to Dawn can save us. Found Nyambi is probably better than Meddling Mage. Can pick up a Bugler again, gain a bit of life. Or maybe even Okatra if we need to gain five. They also get to loot with the Biomancer once it gets an extra plus one counter. Discards an extra Kumena. I guess they might have just had a bunch of Kumena stuck in hand. So are we dead? There's a company. They can hit a Reachery that way without needing to actually play it from their hands. It's going to be double Deep Root Elites putting two counters on the Herald and then they can just use Kumena tapping five Merfolk to put plus one counters everywhere. And we're dead. All right, GG's. Yeah, it's possible the Meddling Mage should have named Company instead of Regiri here, but uh, who knows? It's possible that the Merfolk player didn't get four copies of Company yet. So yeah, Merfolk definitely a deck that uh, got some nice new tools in recent expansions. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with uh, keepable hands. Facing godless shrines, so I guess we're hoping we're putting somehow a reanimator deck where a containment priest can shine. Mindstone, so it looks like a black white, maybe a ramp or control deck. I might want to hold the containment priest until after we play monuments. Although the two life from Hallowed Fountain shocked is probably not going to matter too much. So I'll keep up containment priest just in case I do decide to play it out. Opponent is playing Mardu. Solemnity, I see. So it's a Croxa Luminous Broodmoth combo deck. Well, does Containment Priest stop any of those shenanigans? It does. It prevents uh, Croxa from coming back with the Broodmoth. So we probably want to keep this one hidden for now. And just play Monuments. And then play the Priest in response to their combo, basically. There's the Broodmoth. So next turn it could already combo off with Croxa and deal infinite damage essentially. But we'll make sure to stop that. So we'll play Guard Mage. Now we do need to make sure we can still win a fair game against a 3-4 flyer here, so... Our hand's not looking too good at the moment. And yeah, opponent would have had the full combo here. Good thing we had Containment Priest. And Savior can protect the Priest as well. And the Priest exiles Croxa. So... No infinite combo for our opponent, despite having all three combo pieces, and our opponent explodes. A lot of early concessions today. People really don't seem to like playing against these Hate Bear style cards. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No white mana means we gotta take a mulligan. This time no blue, but I'll keep 
Definitely want to keep Monument with Oketra, and then between Meddling Mage and Deputy, probably keep Deputy. If I'm not going to be able to play Meddling Mage on turn 2, it loses a bit of effectiveness, and Deputy can still be useful later in the game, after we deploy Monument. There's also an argument for getting rid of a land, but I want to be able to play Monument and Oketra. Turn 1 Lanor Elves. So Dusk could be useful in the matchup if they try and ramp into some big creatures. Although it looks like an Elf token deck, maybe. Another Elf. And Riss makes a first token. Deputy could get rid of both Lanor Elves. It's probably the play. Hopefully we find the Ambia at some point to get rid of the second monument. Ah, that's a pretty good Oketra to draw as well. Get in for two, and then next turn we can play Oketra the True to join God Eternal Okatra and Okatra's Monument. For mana, I guess we have to be careful with uh, Selder Wreckage potentially. I think I'm fine if they settle me here, because we'll get a couple lands that we can then sink into Okatra the True's ability. That's just another risk activation. So next turn they could start doubling tokens. Which could potentially outpace my token generation. Mirari's Wake. That's a nice one. So let's see what happens if I activate Shafat Dunes. I do represent a lot of damage here. And if I can force them to chum block with their tokens, then Riss is a lot less scary. Yeah, I think I go for it. Probably hold Deputy back. Or do I? I think I can even attack with it, because they're kind of forced to chum block both of these. Yeah, this seems fine. Opponent falls to three, no tokens, although they could have a big March of the Multitudes here to stabilize. It's gonna be Cathar's Crusade instead, into Trostani. Okay, it's pretty good. Six six life linking tokens, although Dusk should be able to win us the game now. That was a fun game, we got to see two unique decks in action, and we even got to play all the Oketra cards. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Yurion Sky Nomad. It's gonna make it tricky to name something with Meddling Mage, but our hand's keepable. Let's see what type of Yurion deck it is. A blue one. Still doesn't really narrow it down. Could be blue-green, in which case I want to name one of the ramp cards, but... Probably just gonna pass and flash in one of our two drops here. It's gonna be an opt. Another opt. And Hallowed Fountain untapped. And Secret Keeper gonna try and mill me. Sure. Yeah. 
I mean, at some point I can also just decide to name Yorion. Alright, so maybe this is a Jeskai Yorion deck. Or just blue-white, I guess. They seem pretty serious about milling. But, uh, yeah, still don't really know what I should name with Meddling Mage. Maybe a Wrath. I guess it makes sense. Although I can also play Selfless Savior here. Yeah, let's just play Bugler for now. Find... I guess another Selfless Savior. Dovin's Acuity, sure. I guess that's a good one to name with the Meddling Mage, because it will eventually pick it back up. So, attack with everyone. Could definitely also name Wrath of God here, or Shatter the Sky. How much life is my opponent on? 11? So they're pretty close to dead. If they replay QD, I probably don't care too much. Yeah, let's just name Wrath of God. And they had Shatter the Sky, of course. So Savior wants to save Meddling Mage and probably the Bugler. Can play Oketra now. Brazen Borrower to bounce Oketra. Picks up Acuity. So I can replay Oketra. It's probably still the best I can do here. Or I could play Nyambi to pick up Bugler. And replay Bugler. Oketra would be more effective if I can play another creature alongside it. Yeah, I guess we'll go with Nyambi here. Nyambi can also be nice with Meddling Mage, since you can potentially reset it and name something else. Deputy can maybe get rid of the Acuity. Run away together to bounce Meddling Mage, since they want a Wrath of God here. Nope, another Acuity. Back up to 10. It's gonna mill me once again. Still have 33 cards in library, so it's gonna be a while. And Okatra the True doesn't die to most sweepers. So we've got options. Can't quite kill my opponent if I deputy the Secret Keeper. I probably just play Okatra and a Meddling Mage Wrath of God again. And even if they do shatter the sky, I should be able to replay enough creatures to turn on Okatra the true. Winds of Rebuke is going to bounce Oketra. Mill me some more. Replay Acuity. Pick up 
but I think they're just dead on board now. Alright, that was an interesting game against the Yorion Mill Control deck. Definitely not a matchup you encounter very often, but at least it's something a little different. But uh, yeah, hopefully we were able to see the deck in a few different matchups here. Overall, the deck's definitely not a tier 1 historic deck, but it's definitely capable of winning some games, can even beat some of the best strategies like Goblins and the Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck, especially if you're on the play and draw some meddling mages, those are pretty key in those matchups. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.